Right, so I'm joined now by Professor John Brown, who is the Astronomer Royal for Scotland and also the 2012 recipient for the RAS's Gold Medal in Geophysics, who is here at the National Astronomy Meeting to present new research on the way in which comets behave when they move around the Sun. So, thank you for joining us. Pleasure. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about your research and what we're learning about comets from this new data? Well, it's something I've been interested in for, you know, embarrassingly long decades, actually, because we first saw these things in the 1980s. And my thought was, if you drop a comet into the sun, it's like the time inverse of throwing something out from the sun, like a solar flare throws things out. So I would, for years and years, I'd been vaguely aware, if you dropped a comet into the sun, that you should get some kind of explosive behaviour. But I'd never gone into it in detail. So eventually, in the last couple of years, I'd worked through, in a very simplified way, the th estimates, rather than detailed numerical computations, estimates of um, what kind of thing you might expect to happen, depending on how heavy the mainly how massive the comet is, what it's made of, and how deep it goes into the sun's atmosphere. These are the three main things. So. And have you seen different examples of each of these behaviour types to, to comets that we already know about? Well, unfortunately, the, 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 there's three things can happen. One is small comets, uh, the ones that don't, their orbits don't take them too near the sun, tend to just vaporise in sunlight quite high up. And many of them vaporise before they get near the sun. We see them just vanish. Uh, the second type, which is the ones that we're looking at most at the moment, are large enough to go further in um, and they vaporise in sunlight but they do it inside the sun, lower sun's atmosphere and two of those have been seen, one of them just about survived, one died. That's, that all happened last year, the same year as my paper about this went in, which is interesting. The third type, which is the ones that nobody's ever discussed at all before, which I was especially interested in, ones that go deeper into the sun's atmosphere and they basically burn up not by sunlight, by friction, just like uh, like the space station, or not the space station, but the shuttle. You know, they, they don't have a heat shield really, but they, they melt and vaporise and explode in the lower sun's atmosphere very quickly. So you've got these sort of things that we call, uh, that they just kind of fizzle out in the corona, and other ones that go into the chromosphere and uh, explode in seconds rather than kind of fizzling out in an hour or so. Uh, but I think... I'm hoping, you know, it depends how long I've got to go, but I'm hoping that in my lifetime we'll see what I... I some people call them uh, sun plungers, you know, uh, or sun plummeters, that's a, you know, whatever, there's all sorts of daft names. But I would love to see one of the ones going in deep in the atmosphere, which actually explodes like a solar flare. Um, and what will it not only tell us about comets, but also presumably more details about the solar, the sun's yeah, atmosphere Yeah, well, well? On, on the, the comet front, what, what to me is, we can make an estimate how massive they are. The heavier they are, the longer they survive. So if you look at how long they survive, you can estimate how heavy they are. To me, potentially the most exciting thing is, as the whole comet burns up, vaporises and explodes, and you'll actually see a spectrum of the whole structure. So you can potentially get the chemical abundances right through the whole mass of a comet. Everything we've done so far has been scratching the surface. Um, as far as the sun's concerned, there are movies of Comet Lovejoy, and as it's shot through the atmosphere, you can see these sort of uh, magnetic, hot, mag heated magnetic ribbons which are denser, and the comet's going, and the tail's quite straight, and suddenly it goes through some one of these things at an angle, and the tail behind it lashes like a whip, and presumably because the material suddenly slaps into the strong magnetic field. So we've actually, it's interesting, because we've been given new probes of the solar atmosphere. So hopefully we can learn something about comets and about the sun, as you say. Well, good luck on the hunt for one of the uh, sun plunges. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.